All right, back on yet another project. We got a beautiful 64 Impala convertible. And uh, kind of a project bought this way, not completely assembled. A friend of mine brought it over. We're going to uh, take a little pride in putting this one together. I love these old Impalas, man. It's already got the 327 kind of decked out. We got to put just reassemble everything, tinker with quite a bit. We're putting the uh, Sniper EFI on this. Another Sniper EFI system. So, uh, new fuel pump, the Sniper, the wiring harness, uh, everything else taken off the carburetor. And we're going to run the EFI. So, uh, bear with me. And we'll get back on this project. I'll uh, just keep popping in, taking little videos as we go. All right, we just dropped on the Holly Sniper. Had to shorten up the studs on the intake. We're gonna change that out to a brand new gasket here in a second. I just gotta find it. Just test fitting, making sure everything worked. Found the vacuum uh, that was too high for this thing to mount. There we go, back up. So we're going to use the vacuum off the sniper system for the brake booster. And uh, if we need to tie any other vacuums in. But this is pretty simple as far as the car. Uh, and the timing will be set by the actual sniper box itself. So we'll keep going. I'm going to shorten up these radiator hoses. Make a few things look a little better. Drop in some wheel wells. We'll keep going. All right, now that we got the uh, Sniper EFI mounted on the motor, time to run our uh, fuel line. Make sure, I repeat, make sure you're not using vacuum line. It will blow up. Or eventually get a weak spot, pop out. This is our new Holly Sniper setup for the fuel pump. Uh, this fuel pump is an in-tank. Now, uh, one thing about these Holly Snipers, some of them do have a return line. So, therefore, it's going to have to come back to here. And uh, we're going to try to just simply add it right in there and bring down a tube. I was told by an expert that it's good to run the line all the way about to the bottom of the tank off this. So, I actually learned something on this one. So, uh, just information for me to pass on. And wire up the new plug. Make sure you got good grounds, man. Good grounds are like really big on these electric fuel pumps. And uh, yeah, we'll go ahead and get this thing set up, pop it in here. Uh, I noticed that we cannot get this piece in, so we can actually unscrew it by these two screws, Phillips and Phillips. I do like to lock tight these when we put them back in. You don't want to one day just be uh, driving down the road and uh, lose your fuel gauge. So there you go. We're going to pop that off, slide this piece in through the hole. After that's in the hole, then we put the arm back down through this as well. Slide it by this tube stuff. It'll fit. And then we can remount it to this as soon as this piece is actually in the tank. Don't bend it. Take it off. Do it the right way. And lock tight the screws. Bear with me. All right. Next step drilled a hole in here for a return line from the uh, EFI from the sniper system and uh, after doing this I just slightly take a uh, a uh, magnet wipe it around in there fully extended get all the little metal shavings or debris that may be there and then uh, also blow it out with air from the gas tank in that and this and just make sure there's no debris left in there I know it has a filter but yeah, metal shavings are a bad, bad thing. Bear with me. We'll get this uh, next fitting popped in. And I actually added a uh, extra O-ring to this for this piece right here. If you look at it, got a slight indent. There you go. So being right here, we hit that, snugs it up, and everything's like it should be. Just don't want it leaking when it's got a full tank or leaking at all. So there you go. All right, here we go. I had to cuss at this thing off camera, you know. Anyway, long story short, I got the uh, fitting 
with the O-rings in and the nuts and everything tight. I don't know. This is kind of going to be a pain in the butt to see. There you go. We're going to try to connect the tube off the end of that if I can, hopefully, to go down to the bottom of the tank. But anyway, you can see it's got the nut inside. I was able to use some uh, sharp tip pliers to get the back started, twist the fitting in, and tighten it up from the outer side, which was a lot easier. So, there you go. Uh, the fuel pump was a little different for these. You do have to pull off the ascending unit for a minute, put on the sock, don't forget the sock. Like you're wearing your shoes with no socks, your feet it stink. Ah! Anyway, uh, this right here goes in the hole, whatnot. I wish I had a spare set of hands so you guys could actually watch me do this, but just remember this thing, if you look at it, it's got certain things like this prong at the tip of my thumb, which goes straight up to that one, and this prong, which goes to the bottom right one on that one. So just keep in mind it goes in there and then that ring holds it all in place. And put your fuel sending unit on this piece, two screws. This is for the Impalas. Uh, other models may vary. So if I'm wrong, uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions that I might. If not, uh, common sense goes a long way. Oh, there you go. Let me get this in and uh, we'll resume. All right, back at it. I am a cheater and I use my jack stand for holding up the gas tank. But some of the story, this tank is a weird one and mounts different. Bear with me on my light. Uh, my headlamp sets my phone off. Black one on the right to return. The one on the left with the uh, 90 snout. That is our new fuel pump. And the black corrugated is uh, the new wiring for it, actually. Which we're going to make our own pigtail since this comes from a new AFI system. But like I said before, make sure you got ground to the body and a direct ground to the unit. It uh, works out a lot better. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, put these straps on. Which we're missing the bolts for. Commonly I run into a lot of this. So we're going to run about a 4 inch 3 inch bolt. Should fit right through that hole. And then that size goes up in here and it has a little clasp that actually holds down just enough to uh, hold for tension. Bear with me. All right, the next piece of this uh, right here is our return line passenger side of the car on these. And over here on the driver's side is the fuel pressure line. Uh, the feed for this thing and this is the return we've got our lines ran along the bottom we're gonna go ahead and clamp everything up though you don't want a bunch of vibration chewing through your rubber let me pause this lift the car up and I'll show you yeah how I ran it on this every car is one in its own but uh, these 64 Impalas with the X frame bear with me all right now that we're back under it these two lines right here in the middle of the screen, 3 8 fuel line. You just tuck her all the way in. And now what I'm going to do is zip tie it together. Try to have the lines even, it helps. Just tuck them in because our exhaust is going to be next. And then right there, uh, let me get a good picture. There you go. Okay, there's the fuel line pressure side and the fuel line return side with the fitting that we added. But also keep in mind, you're going to be running new wiring to this thing as well. It came with its own plug and its own fuel pump wire and relay. So all that will connect up to the front. I might end up running those through the car on this though. Bear with me and we'll get onto that piece next. All right, here we go. Next little uh, piece of this, this is a small block Chevy, uh, every motor is a little different, but common in different ways. I pulled out a plug right here to the water jacket, preferably I wanted to go by the thermostat, but I don't have the fitting here, and the auto parts those are closed already tonight. So we're going to situate a few sensors off this uh, Holly Sniper. Quick 
plug and play O2 sensor, I believe this one is. And this wire right here is for the water temp. And all this factors in when you go to plug everything in and give it its first little quick program. So we're going to squeeze that in there, do it by hand. Make sure it goes in good. And uh, once we get that in, we'll plug this in. And we'll work on sending our O2 wire back. And if I remember right, we got an oil one too as well. Just got to find it. And uh, each one of these kind of just goes to a different purpose. So we'll situate all this, get it all plug and play it in. One of them goes to the distributor box. Uh, we're going to be using... The application to this one of the MSD so we're gonna tie in the MSD box to this and uh, make it work and we got the uh, MSD coil so we go to the uh, points style distributor but if uh, I'm looking at this right this is the aftermarket one that is not actual points it's just small like it so there you go, bear with me. All right, we get a little farther on and on with the video. We mounted the MSD box. We mounted the MSD blaster coil, which will connect to the MSD distributor. It's all gonna integrate in with the Holly Sniper. Yeah, and this is kind of the control unit for that as well. At the initial fire up this, you're going to have to kind of give it a quick little setup wizard. And to be honest with you, I'm pretty smart with cars. I don't really even like uh, technology of cell phones and whatnot, but I figured a few of these out. They're not too hard. Pretty simple. Nothing fancy needed. No laptop. Just a little bit of common sense and you got it. So we're going to go ahead and uh, bag this for tonight. Tomorrow we'll get back on it, and I'll uh, make some more footage. All right, we're back on the uh, 64 Impala build. And uh, I think I got in the last video, the gas tank and whatnot. We just got all of our uh, exhaust set up. Other than back here on these corners, we're going to angle it out on both sides. Uh, this is a simple garage job. It turned out pretty good. A couple tight areas. At the ends of the uh, Flowmasters, real tight bend to get up and over on these. A lot of welding. A little bit of headache, but we got her. Uh, connecting tranny lines. One hell of a large tranny cooler. And uh, new lines for that. Connected into the transmission now. We redid all of our steering after researching it. This is how it goes. Really close. We did have to uh, bracket our brake lines. We're going to put some rubber in between them lines and that metal uh, clamping there. But this would be how the uh, front end stuff goes. Some light buttons up. And uh, we got to get back on wiring. Add an O2 sensor in here uh, for the sniper system. And the wiring for the sniper system to the fuel pump and also the uh, fuel gauge. Uh, bear with me. I'll keep them coming. I'll get a little farther and get some more uh, footage. All right, we are now uh, getting ready to pop off the manual clutch fan. Put on a new electric on here. We got it right here. And uh, pop that on there. Supposed to be a good one. Uh, get a few more things connected so we can uh, make the sniper system run it all. And, uh, yeah, I know it looks like a lot, but you aren't going to end up using every one of them. But as we go, um, the O2 sensor we're about to put in right here on this side. That way we got room to get the starter out. Brakes are all bled. Ready to go. We got our exhaust on the bottom now. So we're going to keep going. I know uh, last little piece, I got the front steering. And uh, I did turn it from left to right to get the correct center on this one. It uh, turned real hard one way previously. <laughs>
All right, we're back on it. Super late night, sunburned forehead. <laughs> All the great stuff in America, right? Anyway, uh, we're getting ready to put in the electric fan. We're going to run relay, wiring, all that, but we got to put in fenders. Let me flip this. To, uh, there it be. Um, yeah, set it, fenders. I'm just slightly adjusting, cutting some of the stuff, making everything look a little better. I'm trying to hide wiring and whatnot, too. So, slowly, piece by piece, this is going to go in right here. And, man, I really got to speak nicely of this fan right here. Flex light, I believe. Uh, it fits really good. Uh, really like the way it's manufactured. Uh, thumbs up, fellas. All right, we're back on the 1964 Impala. And had some loose ends on the exhaust. They kind of give me heck, man. These X-frames ain't no joke. Kind of built the exhaust from scratch as an earlier video. Other than, yeah, we're rocking crutches today. <laughs> Broke my ankle. Pulling a 454 out from my Chevelle. Uh, long story short, we're setting up the uh, O2 sensor in the exhaust. And don't mind, man. I just, everything was so tight under this thing. I did what I could. Uh, kind of give it a uphill as far as a little bit of a slope on the uh, O2 sensor going up. We got a matching thread nut for the uh, O2 sensor to fit in. And we're gonna simply weld that to the exhaust. And uh, I'll keep going on video here in a minute. Just wanna show you what I was up to. Yeah, all right, we're going through this. Uh, just wrapping up a bunch of loose ends, honestly. Uh, all the wiring to the uh, MSD box. Uh, integrating it with the sniper system, the distributor, coil, everything else. And each style that you do uh, modifies by like a wire or two. Just kind of go through the checklist. I put dots on stuff that I'm going to connect in this sequence. Uh, this one is very similar diagram. But uh, pull the diagram up for your setup. Some uh, sniper set. Let me start over. <laughs> Some sniper setups come with their own uh, smart box for say and they uh, wire totally different than this setup does but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and try to wrap this up solder heat shrink you really want good connections or you'll be chasing down stuff forever so good grounds good connections and then uh, I'm gonna resume video here in a minute